think I'm here under false pretenses, so I'll, I'll just address that first. So not really a veteran of, of SAFE, I don't think that I can um, argue that I am, but I work on water and sanitation and hygiene, and I lead WaterAid's um, work on health together with um, Alison McIntyre is in the audience uh, working at Water Aid Australia. But I'm actually here with a different hat today, and that's the ICTC hat. The ICTC is the International Coalition for Trachoma Control, uh, which is a global coalition working on um, control and elimination of blinding trachoma. And um, together with Geordie Woods from Sidesavers, who is also in the audience, I co-chair the WASH working group of ICTC. And what we're trying to do as a group um, is trying to crack this uh, problem that I'm going to talk about um, in a second, which is about bringing two sectors with very disparate objectives together um, in something that I think scientists have been working on for many years, and it's called intersectoral collaboration. And we've never yet found the formula to make that work. Um, so a very ambitious uh, thing that we're trying to do. So this, the second false pretense that, uh, that I should probably address is that I'm, I'm not actually here to talk about any of the evidence or any new evidence. Um, what I will talk about is things like governance and accountability, and I hope you'll bear with me, um, but how we're addressing governance and accountability in an effort to bring the two sectors together so that we can reduce the burden of trachoma. Okay, so um, you've heard the word safe, and I, I guess quite a few of you in the room are familiar with it, but I, I will touch on it very briefly. So when it comes to the control and elimination of trachoma, we have a framework, um, which is more than a lot of other NTDs have, a framework that actually shows us um, what different interventions done by sometimes different stakeholders are needed to address what is quite a complex problem and one of the oldest diseases in the world. Um, known to humanity. So we have on the left-hand side the treatment elements of, uh, of trachoma, surgery uh, to, to reverse the, the inverted eyelid. We have antibiotics to, to prevent the severe um, infection from taking hold. But on the right-hand side, we have the preventive elements. So we've got facial cleanliness, so um, kids mainly um, washing their faces so that they don't have um, flies landing on them, transmitting the, the chlamydia type um, bacteria. And we have environmental improvements. Basically, those are designed to reduce the amount of flies in the environment, um, and ma mainly the Mosca sorbens type of, um, of fly that transmits the infection. That concludes all the scientific terminology um, I can use. Um, but we have a bit of a challenge with the preventive element. Um, and despite having this really great comprehensive framework for addressing um, a disease at a global level, there are varying rates of progress um, in those four elements. And I think that most people who are working in trachoma will um, not hold it against me if I said that the preventive element um, of this, this four-pronged approach is lagging behind a little bit. Um, those of us who are involved in, um, in the, the global discussions on trachoma, such as the, the GET 2020, the Global, global Elimination of Trachoma um, Alliance, are familiar with the same story we hear every year. So we're doing great on surgery, trying to reduce the backlog. Uh, we've done mass drag administration in, in all these districts, but we're still struggling with F and E, facial cleanliness and environmental improvement. So, the question that I'm asking, and, and I was thinking about that a little bit earlier when, um, when the first speaker was discussing how much we need to work together as two sectors, and obviously we have all of you in the room here because you believe that we should be working better together, and there's a lot that we can achieve. We've known this for a very, very long time. Um, we always know that the WASH and, and health sectors need to work together. I remember as a, a young student reading literature from the 80s and 90s and everyone was saying we need more intersectoral collaboration. But somehow we don't manage to do that. So, oh. Right, okay. So, so why is it? And, and I've cir circled the, the challenge in red. Um, and for me it boils down to four elements which are quite simple. 
First of all, okay, we know we need clean faces and we know we need um, environmental improvement, but what interventions do we need to actually um, achieve that, that kind of situation? And we have a large amount of choices, not just in the type of intervention, but where do we deliver um, that intervention? Schools, communities, mass media communication, interpersonal communication. It starts getting a little bit more complicated than just giving out a pill. A pill. Um, so what do we need to do? Which interventions? Who needs to do that? So if we have an eye care organization working in the Amhara region of Ethiopia where um, endemicity of trachoma is very high, does this eye health um, organization need to go around constructing latrines? Is it their responsibility? Is it the best use of their resources? So it starts getting a little bit more complicated. And then the crux of the matter, it's all about money. How much will it cost? And who has to pay for it? Um, and what's more cost effective? So the kind of things that we, we often hear when it comes to this intractability, um, if that's even a word, of the f and &E elements is, um, it's a little bit complicated. We, we don't really know how to do this. Um, and I think that, that that's actually um, something that both sectors feel quite strongly. It's someone else's job. We do hear that quite a lot. So here in this country, we do S and A, and we expect the wash sector to do F and D. Um, and is it too expensive? So if we have limited amount of resources, and I think we've seen this in the published um, academic literature lately, if we only have this much money, let's just do S and A, because we can't afford to do F and E. We have to focus on saving people's sights now. And that's an argument we hear um, in a lot of public health issues. We hear that about cholera, we hear that about um, intestinal worms, we hear that about diarrhea. Um, and the result, the re result is the same as we've had in the last three, four, five decades. Very little progress on disease prevention. So, um, Sol, I just want you to know I haven't hacked into your computer, um, but, but I think we're on the same wavelength here. Um, that there are two spheres um, that, that each sector deals with. Um, and I, I've decided to call them accountability spheres for want of a better word. Um, so what I'm getting at here is that we've got the wash sector on the left-hand side, trachoma on the right, and each one of those has different objectives. We may share some of those broadly. We may say, of course, the trachoma sector will say, well, wash coverage and access and use is relevant for trachoma, but it's not what we hold ourselves to account for, how we measure our success in a sector. So in the, the wash sector, coverage and access indicators are mainly what we hold ourselves to account for. How many people have we reached? How many latrines have been built? How many water points? And in some countries where the accountability um, frameworks are a bit more advanced, we start talking about use and functionality. Is the water pump functional all the time or just some of the time? Or was it functional last month and now it's broken because the part has to come from Denmark? Um, so that's not in every country, but some countries do actually measure those kind of elements. Um, whereas in the trachoma sector, we are talking about disease elimination, disease control, and morbidity management. So what happens if someone already has an infection? It can't be, tr uh, can't be treated or cured, uh, and we need to actually address people's needs. Um, and in between, there's this, this vague area which is, is very uncomfortable, um, and it, it involves buying into someone else's objectives and maybe sharing budgets or maybe going to joint meetings. And how do we address this? How, how should we do this? Um, it's a very uncomfortable area. And what, what I'm trying to do in the next couple of slides is to try and see how we need to bring people into that area of discomfort and make them a little bit more comfortable. Um, so Sol touched on this um, several times, and I think it's important to, to keep in mind. It will be a hard, um, difficult uh, thing to do to actually tell the wash sector, you need to care about trachoma. And there's, there are very valid reasons for that. Um, they may say, well, you know, we don't even hold ourselves to account for disease, diseases that kill people, let alone diseases that blind people. We don't have money for cholera preparedness, for example. We only have um, money for cholera response. And for the trachoma sector, um, 
Well, surgery and antibiotics are things that they, they, they own, they know how to do, um, and it's much harder for them to imagine being held to account for um, getting the coverage of latrines. Um, high enough to actually result in, in less disease. But where we do converge is the joint agenda of the development sector overall. We're all in this business, I hope, well I am at least, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of the people in the room are, to improve people's lives. And one thing that trachoma and WASH have in common is that they both affect the poorest, most marginalized, most hard to reach and vulnerable populations. So if we're in the business of WASH or trachoma to improve equity and to reduce poverty, then it should be possible for us to converge. And then there's another sector that comes into, into this um, arena, which is also interested in the same one, which is the disability sector. Um, people who are involved in disability prevention, but also disability management. And there are um, some very good examples of where organizations like Sightsavers and WaterAid have come together to, for example, provide services that are accessible to people with visual impairments and other physical impairments as well. So there is a zone there for us um, to, to come together. So having said all of that, what is it that, that, that's actually being done? And I've got three and a half minutes, but I'll try and <laughs> get there quickly enough. Um, so we're starting to do some things, um, but as you can see, not everything in this table is green. Um, some of it is amber or red, but I'll try and touch on that a little bit. So what you have in this table um, is something that came out of a round table uh, for bringing together WASH and NTD's stakeholders. I think probably the first one in, in many years or, or decades, or maybe it's just my short-term memory. Um, this was done in Seattle in um, December 2012, and some of you who are here were in the room as well. And we came together and agreed that there are several actions that need to be done over um, four domains, if you like. So we need more joint advocacy. So having agreed that what we care about is equity and poverty reduction and, and just improved well-being, what is it that we can do together to advocate for a greater emphasis on public health, on investment in those neglected areas, um, in reaching those neglected communities, those um, hard-to-reach people? Um, so we're already doing some, some joint advocacy, um, and I'll, I'll touch on that in a second. Um, training. We actually need people in each sector to understand a little bit more what it is that they, they need to know in order to deliver more effective programs. Um, so one example that's being done at the moment by Emory University is an online training course which results in a certificate, and that's actually designed for WASH practitioners at country level um, to gain the basic um, level of knowledge, not just on trachoma, but NTDs overall, um, to be able to buy into the objectives of the other sector and work better together. In terms of mapping and data collection and monitoring, several initiatives happening, but one worth mentioning um, strongly is the DFID-funded Global Trachoma Mapping Project, um, which has succeeded in mapping trachoma in over 1,000 districts um, in 17 months, I believe. Um, but that project, interestingly, not just gathers data on trachoma, it gathers data on water and sanitation coverage as well in the endemic districts to try and understand that relationship a bit better without having to do um, an impact evaluation or a trial, which would be much more complicated from a WASH perspective. Um, and the result of those mapping initiatives are also shared databases, so we have information that we can use as a joint operation. Um, but there are other things that we're um, a little bit behind on, things like shared indicators. So how do we hold each other to account um, jointly? How do we hold ourselves to account jointly? Um, also, what are the research priorities? And what kind of evidence do we need? We say a lot that we need evidence. Is it about the link between WASH and trachoma? Or is it about which interventions work best and how they should be delivered? I personally would say we need the latter rather than the former because we can sort of understand why the UK doesn't have trachoma anymore, even before mass drug administration um, started happening. I'm rushing um, a little bit, but this is just to give you an example of the, um, the, the manual 
which is on the right-hand side. That's the, um, the website with the map of the trachoma, um, trachoma endemicity and, and NTDs overall. This is the manual, uh, manual itself, and the uh, example on the left is uh, an example of joint advocacy between site savers and, and water aid. Um, and the manual itself also has a section on advocacy. So you thought this was a very policy wonky um, so far. Now it's going to get really wonky. So um, we have um, had a lot of discussions in the ICTC WASH working group about what is it that's going to take us one step further. If we have the safe strategy in place, and it's been in place for a while now, but still we're not seeing that level of progress on the preventive side, what is it that's missing? Um, and I guess, for want of a better word, one of the things that we feel are missing are the behaviors or the intentions behind the safe strategy. The first attempt that we're, we're trying to put in place as a, as a group is a set of guiding principles. So when we deliver the safe strategies, um, strategy in country, what are the things that inform how we deliver that strategy? And I won't go into too much detail into any of those, but the idea is to draw on things like the aid effectiveness principle, for example, ownership. So who is it that drives the trachoma um, efforts in country? Should it be the various stakeholders, NGOs, WHO, or is it the national government? And if it's the national government, what sort of efforts that the government is doing do we need to get behind in order to support those efforts? Um, things like partnership and participation. Who is it that needs to be involved in trachoma planning processes in country? I think you're already starting to see that these things are very trachoma specific here, but they have implication for basically every disease control effort, not just NTD, where you have to bring stakeholders together. Um, and again, I, I just want to point out that we've got viable financing um, on the right-hand side. Um, and that's really the financing arrangements are often where collaboration falls apart at the end. Um, so all of these principles are supposed to be coming together for trachoma elimination, but you could see that they have a much, um, much broader potential um, outcome on things like health, poverty, reduction, and equity. And the idea of those guiding principles is to guide ICTC members that include WHO, NGOs, academic institutions, etc., in support of national government efforts. This is my last slide, I think. Apologies that I'm a couple of minutes um, over the time. But we're not stopping there. We're not going to let uh, lack of progress stop us. Um, and there are a couple of things that are happening at the moment that I just want to flag. And hopefully next time we have this conference, we can tell you how successful um, this was. The first thing is that I've, I've pointed out earlier that uh, this area of, of monitoring and, and, um, and indicators and also the, the shared um, research agenda are where we still have a bit of um, a gray area. We're not really sure how to address that. So the first thing that we're going to do is to have a round table in, um, in London, I hope, in September, which I'm sure some of you uh, will be in. Uh, to try and address that, actually come up with a set of indicators that we all should be monitoring, but also where we need more research. Um, within the NNN, that's another acronym for you, um, which is the NTD's NGO Network, um, we have come up with two new working groups, um, one on WASH and one on Morbidity Management and Disability Prevention, MMDP, that's another acronym for you. Um, and the idea is to bring all the different disease groups from across the network, including Schisto, um, STH, another TLA, sorry, um, schistosomiasis, uh, lymphatic filariasis, et cetera, together to address these issues. Um, but more interestingly, I think, I hope, um, we're coming up with a toolkit for program, trachoma program implementers on the ground. And that toolkit is not going to say, this is how you build a latrine, or this is how deep a borehole needs to be, and this is where you site it. What it will actually try and do is to tell people, here are the questions you need to be asking. Here are the people that you need to be speaking to. Here are the governance structures you need to put in place in order to be able to work together. And hopefully, this is how much it's going to cost you. Um, and we hope that that kind of effort will lead us towards increased progress and hopefully clean and smiling faces and no more trachoma. Um, 
that's all I have to say for now, and I hope you have some interesting questions later.